Hello, After Buzzers, and welcome to the Spanish Princess After Show. We're talking episode six, A Polite Kidnapping. Hello, Joanna. Women are definitely in charge. And yay, Rose is not dead. And we have special guests. Stay tuned. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Spanish Princess After Show. Uh, we're going to talk episode six of like kidnapping. As you can see, we have special guests. Let's give a warm welcome Woo! to the showrunners for the Spanish Princess. Thank you. Uh, so we have Emma Frost and Matthew Graham. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So, real quick off the top, what is a showrunner? What do you do involved with the show? Because I think some people out there, they, they've heard the word showrunner, yeah. but don't. What is a day to day kind um, of thing? It basically means we created and write the show and we produce it. We are, we're the, the single creative lens for the show. The same way a director would be for a movie. Mm. Everything passes through. We us. stick our nose into everybody's business <laughs> is what we do. All right, well, then we have a lot of questions yes, for you guys. Absolutely, because I'm like, wait a minute, what? Uh, <laughs> but before we get into that as well, uh, my name is Carrie Lane, and I have my awesome co-host. Hey, guys, it's Virginia Reyna, and I'm so excited to be here today. Yes, I'm super excited to talk about this, and especially now that we have, like, the source to be like, <laughs> wait a minute, <laughs> hold on. Um, so one of the big things this episode is we get Joanna. Oh, my gosh, she was stunning as a present just visually the hair. the hair I just wanted that hair I was she's like, a oh lion my goodness. And it was just it was, she, yes. yeah she was amazing and she was like the opposite of Catherine just like vicious and mean and oh god but I loved her I don't want to call her mean though Oh, well, she's she's a little <laughs> jaded, jaded. I feel yes. like she's she does not like her husband one teeny tiny bit and do you know um in history she's called Joanna the Mad Oh, because they keep referencing yeah. like she's yeah. mad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. But for us, we really wanted to show what we think is the truth of that, which is that she was gaslit by the men in her life, her father and her husband. So uh, very interesting. So where do you where do you come up with all this? Like, what makes you decide? Okay, this is the side we want to show because it definitely feels like there was this empathy you were trying mm -hmm. to give her. You know, so like, what is it when you read it? You're like, okay, this is the voice I want to give. Well, there were two things. I mean, the, the first thing that really struck us, and Emma was the one who read this and said, we've got to do this story, is the polite kidnapping itself. The fact mm. that while they were negotiating what the heck to do with Catherine, God, as far as they were concerned, washes her sister and her sister's husband up on the shores of England. And they when keep, she's just become queen. When she's just become queen. And they keep her there until they get what they want from her. Um, and that was the first amazing thing. But the second thing was yeah. that, you know, there's almost... Uh, th it's very, very unlikely that Joanna was mad. Joanna was uh, maybe bipolar. She may have been suffering from severe postnatal depression. She had seven children. Well, um, anybody would children. suffer <laughs> from that. I yeah. do when I go crazy. You know, I would also say strong wound and power. I think it's pretty easy that they could go, oh, yeah, she's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, her being so headstrong, and even that you could say in a negative way. of Yeah, and her, her father, um, her husband, and her son all in turn said she was mad, mm -hmm. and she ended up being locked away for the rest of her life just so they could rule instead of her. So I think I sent something there. Yeah. Maybe she wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. But, yeah, uh, I mean, for us, the show is, is such a feminist take anyway mm -hmm. on history, and we want to put forward, you know, the, the female point of view. So for us, it's about saying, let's just forget all this stuff about Joanna is mad and say what was the reality and who was she underneath it. Mm. So that's why we approached it the way we did. Do you feel you did that because of that it's 2019 or just in general of history not fully showing some characters and people that – maybe weren't as properly represented or both both completely both i mean the show has an attitude of wanting to you know tell i mean we don't know what the truth was for these women so much as so little has been written down about them so mm. we have to blow life into them and think about what they thought and felt and what they did but the truth also is that the show is for a 21st century audience and we're always looking at how we can make these characters feel really relevant for the audience watching it now which is what i love about this show because you know i've watched I, I love british history and i've watched every like the tutors everything and it's always this old lady that just is like you know will not divorce henry or harry 
Um, you know, and so you always get that same kind of story. And here she's like this beautiful girl that, you know, is really like in her own and she knows what she wants. And we never get to see that. So I really appreciate the, you know, the road that you're leading us down. And I'm so excited that you guys got renewed for eight more episodes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's eight so more. exciting. Because it's like, okay, where, because so you guys obviously planned like where the story arc is going. Or how far did you plan you ahead? You think it's sad now. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh no. No. <laughs> um, we we always planned actually to to uh, be between thirteen and sixteen oh, okay. episodes. That's what we wanted, and so we storylined it like that. And stars said, "Hey, have the money for the first date, and if the first date goes well, we'll do the rest of it." So nice. we're really really thrilled that it's going well enough <laughs> for them to give us some more money yeah. to make some more. And was... we've already written the other eight as well. Uh, so. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Does that help then in terms of planning? Because you could lay these pieces out along the way rather than yeah. the shows that go, oh, surprise, you're done, or surprise, you get more. Yeah, I mean, we planned it so that uh, we have a really clear ending at the end of episode eight of this, mm -hmm. the current season, so that if we didn't go any further, it would still be satisfying for the fans. Right, because that's the worst. Yeah, like, that was the yeah. worst, like, oh, what happened or what yeah, could have happened. Yeah. So and that's... it just feels like it stops right. in some shows, yeah. No, there's an ending. I, I hope it's fair to say people will feel it goes out with a bit of a bang <laughs> at the end of it. Yeah. Oh, but it we does. know there's going to be eight more, so yeah. you got to hang in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Mm. Yeah, All so many, so many emotions and questions. We uh, do welcome everybody who's live. We're having some tech issues with our live stream chat, but welcome everybody who's watching it live. And if you are watching, please comment down below. We love hearing everybody's thoughts. Um, we've seen them on the previous episodes as well, and it's so fun to be able to discuss this and like yeah. you know who knows they might read your questions as well yeah and if you have a question for them in the live chat yeah. gets going let us know so we can ask them as well exactly uh something else with joanna was there a particular goal in mind of how she looked or was it you know looking at the reference of what maybe existed you know of text or paintings or such or was it you had somebody in mind or did the actor come in and you go ah that's who it is. The actor came in. Because ah. <laughs> okay. that's what I read about with Catherine, too. It was like the first person that came in was like perfect, but you yeah, didn't want to yeah. pick her yes, right away because exactly right. it was like exactly too right. soon. Um, Alba, who plays Joanna, actually auditioned for Catherine. Oh, interesting. Um, and the first time we watched her tape, we just said, no, she's not Catherine, she's Joanna. Mm. Because we'd already written them. We knew exactly what we wanted for Joanna. You know, she just immediately brought that. You know, she's beautiful and she's got this odd off kilter way of doing things that just felt completely perfect. And what's interesting is uh, Charlotte and Alba, when you actually see them next to each other, they've both got tiny frames, really mm -hmm. fine bone structure. You believe that they're sisters and that right. was just a happy yeah. accident. But I mean, a shout out to Alba because, yeah. um, you know, she doesn't speak much English. Oh, so okay. she learnt with a coach, she learnt the lines in English by repetition and then had to trust that her performance was working and that someone would say if, if, if she sometimes intoned things in the wrong way or put the wrong emphasis on a word, to, it's like flying blind, <laughs> but still flying brilliantly. Yeah. And I mean, I think, and, and I know she was, at the time she was very worried. She was yeah, like, sure. am I gonna be, is it gonna be okay? And we were like, you, you've got something of the other about you now mm -hmm. because this is not your first language. It's giving you something that's different. And, and I think she's just fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. also, isn't that more accurate in a way? If she's from Spain, like English wouldn't necessarily be the first language to discuss and do these diplomatic meetings. Absolutely. There's Absolutely. always a challenge, though, when you're making a show in the English language about where you place that. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, as Matthew's saying for Alba, genuinely just some of the lines she didn't really understand you know mm -hmm. and obviously she got a translation and so on but yeah. as he says the inflection when you when you speak uh. and properly understand a language you know how to put the inflection on it and when you don't sometimes you you know it, it comes out sounding sure. slightly unbalanced so um we've got i mean you know the cast we've got three or four spanish actors and then actors british actors and you know from all over but i think you have to have that mix so when when y'all were going through this though, I know you said there's very little history on the women. Is was there a lot about their relationship as sisters or not really? Did y'all kind of There was some. I mean, th to be honest, most of it's defined by the politics, which of course are defined by the men. <laughs> right. So the politics mm. were that Catherine was the favored child and Joanna was the one that they had to sort of marry in a kind I mean Catherine was the one whose marriage really mattered. Mm. To, to, to Isabella and Ferdinand. 
Um, and so I, we, we kind of had to extrapolate from that that maybe Joanna suffered a lot from jealousy and that she saw a side of Isabella that Catherine never saw because Joanna was tortured by her mother for atheism. Um, Joanna was an atheist, which was like saying you believed in leprechauns. I mean, it was so unusual to them that anyone would say they... Well, if, if you to don't the believe staunchly in... Catholic queen who went yeah, on right. to set up the Inquisition. Right. I mean, that's. I would almost say that was refreshing to have her be like, nope, yeah, y'all yeah, are yeah. crazy. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't believe that. It's, yeah, like, it's fine. Exactly. Yeah, it was great when she was like, well, I don't believe it, but I know you believe it, yeah. so yeah. you swear on this. Like yeah, That was yeah. such a good point. Yeah. Um, so another thing with her, we get the uh, torture uh, reference, and then almost the trying to seduce Harry when they're in that uh, mm. the room, and kind of implying of her uh, enjoying it almost as a fetish y thing of like, here I'm tied up and everything, mm -hmm. right? But it cuts away. So yes, it does. To, so uh, <laughs> is that supposed to imply that we, the audience, can make our guess on if he and she uh, participated in an act or not? Well, yeah. and then it also begs the question, like, will we find out in future episodes? I don't think so. Will it get thrown back in our... You know, like, we don't know. These are all the things that I need to I think to it's know. fair to say, without giving anything away, it's fair to say that the fact that you're having this conversation means you're going to be in Catherine's shoes mm. yeah. in the next two uh, episodes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and that, that just makes... Like, it just makes me so upset because it's like, you know, her sister is trying to seduce her man because she's like, well, not every man is great. Like, you think I thought it was, great. like, going to be a test thing. She goes, okay fine my sister says you're so great we'll see right. if you you know come on to me the way i'm really making it open for you but i don't you know think you go, i feel like you go don't either way passed. you guys would have <laughs> laughed if you'd been in the cutting room with us at that moment <laughs> ah. what point do you cut out oh. right. how close is harry ah. allowed to get and we would be going another frame yeah. another always oh, oh, too close no no <laughs> take it back at there <laughs> yeah so you're just like oh well, let's toy with them more like pull yeah. those hard strings yeah. yes um Paula, um, Alexandra, Catherine Sanchez, what do you guys, what are your guys' overall thoughts of Catherine's sister? I would say I loved her. I thought she was fascinating to watch. Uh, so this is from our live chat. So yay, live chat's going. Um, I mean, we've kind of said already, but uh, what did you think of the sister overall? I love her, but I hate her because, <laughs> you know, like, I, I, like, you guys have made me fall in love with Catherine. And so mm. I just want the best for her. And it almost feels like Veep. Like, you know, with Veep, how, like, she can never truly win. And, like, even if she thinks she's about to win, she doesn't. Yes. That's how it kind of feels with Catherine. Like, oh, I'm going to get this dowry. My ah. sister's going to grant it to me. I figured it out. And then, nope, she's going to, yeah. like, usurp you. And, like, now her kids are going to marry into it. Oh, you know? So it's yeah. just, like, it, oh, I don't, yeah, I don't really like her. Uh, I like that moment when they get the power sister moment of, you are queen. Catherine tells her, you're queen, you go do something. And I like the, you're right, and it's going to go on. But I loved, then it leads into, uh, yes, Lady Margaret gives her the chair when she comes in. I'm like, oh, someone's a kiss ass. <laughs> so yeah. much. Because um, Lady Margaret recognizes, oh, this is an ally that I can use. Oh, here you go. Right. She's only nice to you if you, she can use you or you're used to her. You're right. You know, it's right. actually, I mean, the thing about Margaret is, of course, she's a devout Christian. And yet she is prepared to overlook atheism in order to, you know, curry favor with Joanna. And that's actually the first time you've seen what Margaret's prepared to do to that's stick true. it to Catherine. I mean, she is literally yeah. prepared to be friends with someone who doesn't believe in her God yeah. in order to she'd do anything to be against Catherine, mm. anything to side against her. Which also brings me to, she would also let children suffer and die, mm -hmm. but then they're still Christian. Like, how how do, how do they sleep at night or <laughs> oh, go to church? Oh, you mean What? Yeah, like how, how yeah, these, yeah, these controversial Christians that I still don't understand. Like, if you're a Christian, why would you let these children suffer? I mean, I think I think a lot of people will we'll put anything through the lens of this is what my faith tells me to do. Mm. And I mean, one of the things that's most interesting for us about telling this story is what we know from history is that after Catherine's uh, marriage to Arthur, he said the marriage was consummated. Five months later when he died, she said that it wasn't. Um, so one of them lied. Mm -hmm. And we are telling the story that Catherine lied. That's our what if. And we think that's a really fascinating thing to explore. But even that, you can look at it through the lens of, okay, if she lied, 
Was it about naked ambition she just wanted to be queen? Or was it because she'd been told since she was a child that her destiny was to be the Queen of England? So was it actually because of her faith that mm. she went on this path because she just thought, okay, Arthur's died, something's gone wrong in the plan, what's God saying to me? Oh, he must be saying to me, marry Harry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even that, I think all of the actions of these characters in, in this period, you can look at everything as where did faith play a role in that and how did they persuade themselves of their own course of actions? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because we did have a discussion about that, that historically Catherine is seen as being so pious and so religious, mm -hmm. so the thought of her lying feels almost contrary to who she was. But then again, anybody behind closed doors, nobody knows what you're doing. So... Yeah. No, it's true. But I mean, uh, she and she really was pious and she really was devout and that's probably if she did lie because we don't know right if she did lie uh, as our show says she did she's lying for the best possible reasons yeah. mm, because god true. has a kind of wiggly path for her to take <laughs> exactly. and she's got to take the wiggly path yeah and also she's got her whole household that she's responsible yes, for in exactly. coming to england so mm -hmm. there's kind of two good reasons and one bad one if she mm. was the one yeah. who right. did it's lie. like pick so, the lesser yeah. of the evil yeah so it doesn't I, actually make her a bad person necessarily no i no way like she's lying for survival and benefiting other people yeah. she's not lying to ever hurt anyone no. mm. and um so no not that person <laughs> <laughs> live chat catching up uh sadie cat tv says her sister referring to joanna was crazy fun to watch yes. <laughs> <laughs> nice pun there <laughs> mila j says i don't know if prince harry hooked up with her sister or not so the plot thickens lol <laughs> Uh, thank you so much oh. for everybody chiming in. And yeah, so actually speaking of taking care of her family, we have Rosa. I legit mm -hmm. thought it was a big possibility she could die. It'd be very easy to be like, oh, you know, whoops, something mm. happened, a little mm. accident or mm. something. Oh, that you mean that if they would find her dead? Yeah, I was yeah, waiting for I them thought... to find her dead in the in the park. Yeah, so was I. I was just like, oh no, what did Stratford go and do? And like we love, like we love her because she's like that friend that you know that like uh, believes in love and everything's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, like yeah. no, 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 girl, Poor he's married, Rose. and yeah, it's not gonna but happen. Do you know you. The, the really sad thing is that in this period, she's not even important enough to kill. She's mm. just some girl who's pregnant. She's no threat to him. She's a minor embarrassment, but. At this period, the nobles all have mistresses. Right. You know, that's, that's a good it's point. Just <laughs> it went too dark too fast. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, that's fine, whatever. And besides, he can always lie and be like, oh, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, no, okay, absolutely. Can we do another shout out to that actress, yeah, Nadia Parks, who, um, I, if I tell you, this is how new to acting, professional acting Nadia is. She had to do her final drama school exams on set of The White ah. Princess. Oh, wow. the Spanish princess. It was her first role, and she was still at school wow. when she got the part. That's wow. awesome. So, well, yeah. We feel her acting's phenomenal, but that character has made us super frustrated. Like, girl, come on. That guy <laughs> is just using you. But she's... I don't like doing that. Well, she's young and naive. I'm like, mm, I'm like Lena. I'm all, no, stop. Just keep it all but in But what pace. was really nice, uh, again, it, Ollie Ricks, who plays Stafford, mm -hmm. and uh, Nadia, when they first met, we first started rehearsals, because she's just coming straight out yeah. of drama school, and she was like, I've got to fall in love and have quite <laughs> intimate scenes. And he were, they were so great together. He was so, he was like, I promise you we're going to rehearse so much that you're going to be so bored and <laughs> sick of me. <laughs> <laughs> and he and they were great together, and they were. I think they were became quite good good mates, and yeah. and yeah. and that was that meant that those scenes they were really comfortable with them, and they had fun. Yeah, they're fun to watch, and even yeah. Stafford, like you could see him as a quote unquote bad guy of knocking this girl up and not caring whatsoever about her. Um, but I kind of feel like there's a lot more going on with him behind the scenes that we don't see. Again, I would say, you know, <laughs> if you look towards the next eight episodes, <laughs> there will be yeah. a, a chance to learn more about um, Stafford. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And nice. some redemption. Okay. Maybe some okay. redemption. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And like uh, that. speaking of Lena. Oh, mm -hmm. Lena and Oviedo, they just <laughs> have, like, the way that they look <laughs> at each other, I'm just like, wow. I don't know. The way you're making noises of them, <laughs> feeling it spells disaster for them. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, I, 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 I don't want to say anything. I mean, no, I don't want to I'm like, I can, oh, no. I don't oh, want to no. say anything. It was, a, it was a bad idea to come on to a TV show. <laughs> no, no. All I will say is the, the, the path of love will have a few True. hiccups along the way. But yeah. I just think that we just love them. Yeah, we do. They're... I think everybody does. It's so refreshing to see because, you know, we don't see a lot of that in history. Like the Tudors, you never see anybody of any color ever shown. No, I know. And it's so refreshing because, like, I was reading some of your interviews. 
there was tons of, I mean, not tons, but there was hundreds of Africans that mm-hmm. were in the country. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, and they were there for hundreds of years. Yep. And yeah. you never hear a story of it. No, and it, I mean, it's been whitewashed out of history because most mm-hmm. of the historians are white people. And for, for the most part, they've been white men. Mm. And these people's records, you know, they're, they're in the graveyards and the parish records and so on, but nobody bothered to actually record it. But in the last five years or so, there's been two or three incredible historians who have done the legwork and have gone through individual parish records and they've looked at letters and they've found paintings and tapestries and they've put together these incredible accounts of people of colour in Tudor England and, and earlier. And so for the first time, we're able to actually say, OK, they, these are named people. So Lena and Oviedo, you know, they're recorded in, in Catherine's story and yet somehow nobody puts them in the story. Mm. And for us, it was one of the main reasons to make the show. Well, we know actually. they got married. We, 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 we know that they, they got married and that's pretty much all we know. Okay. So we, I'm sure we've got their love story entirely wrong and if there's a heaven, they're watching us from up there and going, I never said that. I never did that. It's done so well, though, because we as an audience really fall in love with these characters and their romance is a logical easy to follow that you go yes i believe these people falling in love with each other it's not just a lust they've had some of their hiccups but they mm. talk it out mm. they're not just a oh okay, you know the, the first uh Lena goes, oh, well, do you make any money or not? Which, <laughs> it makes sense of, she has to survive. Sure. But then Oviedo checks his pride a little bit and go, okay, you know, like, that makes sense. He was a little bit offended, but expressed that as well. So yeah. they have that, like, com- communication. It's a good thing, communication. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was nice to have them fall in love with each other and be so genuine and still having passion, but realistically, like, we're still going to wait for marriage. Because yeah. also, you know, birth control is not as easy a thing in this time period that I'm like, that's smart, too. <laughs> yeah. And they're also religious in their ways, too, of like, okay, we need to follow this certain course before we get married. Which which is, you know, so I guess my question was this. Was Oviedo actually um, Muslim? Was, is that something that y'all actually did find out? Because I know there was something about how Lena's parents or father was supposed to be, mm-hmm, was there like mm-hmm. a, yeah. she converted? To Christianity, yeah, I mean, or is it, that it, it's it's a it's, it was a really tough uh, piece of history to research actually because um, as I'm sure you know Isabella um, brings in the Spanish Inquisition um, mm-hmm. that actually happens after Catherine has left only about a year after she's left um, so there are stages of how she persecutes people and to start with it was um, convert or leave the country so most Muslims said they had converted whether or not they had right. you know who knows. Um, she later went on to believe that they hadn't, hence the Inquisition. She thought that they were all lying and pretending to be Catholics. Um, from those facts about the Inquisition, we created the characters. And so for us, Lena's family um, had converted to Catholicism, or at least said they had. Oviedo had not. Mm-hmm. Um, and we felt that that was the best representation of those two characters and the place they'd come from and the most interesting story to tell between the two of them. Yeah, we know that Catherine's entourage was made up of people from all over the place and we assume that there would have been a number of different religions in there too and being a Muslim was not outlawed in England Um, that it was and there weren't enough I don't think it it sort of existed as a thing that anybody really thought about no no so you see Margaret Beaufort just sort of thinks he's wrong Mm -hmm, but she actually admires his uh, devotion Mm -hmm. but it's still technically a god to her so I think Lady Margaret would be like, yes, your definition and what you call him might be wrong, per her yes, opinion. Exactly. But at least it's God compared to him being like atheist or yeah. something like that. Yes. She goes, sure, you're like a, a adjacent. And mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a fair way of that. <laughs> adjacent. <laughs> uh, and actually their relationship, I'm, I'm very worried of him like being her spy and doing yeah. things. I'm but you know, like, that's oh. all coming out of the class thing because it, yeah. you know, it's interesting, Lena and Oviedo, uh, are both people of colour not talking about colour but talking about class and she's saying mm. you're, you're, you're kind of the wrong class and he wants to do right for her yeah. and that's why he's working for Lady Margaret because he gets a promotion he gets more money <laughs> so it's an interesting sort of irony yeah slightly misunderstanding that that's the last thing Lena wants him <laughs> yeah, to do yeah, yeah. yeah but again that communication they're not expressing <laughs> yes. it <laughs> unshoot the horses but I do like that she's like okay what other secrets are going on and then they did open up and like okay let's talk more about it Mm. um and then actually another thing with lady margaret her interaction with lady pole Mm. oh Mm. oh not surprised whatsoever and it's like oh you thought the king was gonna come in here did you see that coming Mm -hmm. uh 
I, I did. Didn't. I thought it was one of those that seemed too easy. I didn't think about it when she gets the letter. Okay. I just was. I was waiting for her to go and get beheaded. Right. That's what I thought she was about to be executed. Oh. Yeah. We know, we know in history she eventually is executed. Yes. yes. So that's why I was like, oh no. Is what's it now? You know, yeah. Children. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I right. was like, oh, she's all happy. She's bringing all her kids, and then, you know. And so my kids are innocent and everything. And nope, Lady Margaret's like, I, don't I care. think this is one of the most exciting parts of story arcs for us is Margaret and Maggie mm. and where that two goes. Two titans and then, as actresses. As, mm. Yeah, two titans as actresses. And where it's going to go in the next couple of episodes, I think, is like one of the most exciting things in the show. Oh, seeing the trailer, like they have the little teaser for next time. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, Maggie, Maggie has turned. Yeah. Oh, it absolutely makes sense, though, because we were predicting that in terms of in a previous episode of mm. her husband dying, mm-hmm. she will 100 spent on 100 percent and understandably so blame the people who caused this hardship because that led to the events of him dying. Oh yeah, she's like, okay, I have nothing to lose now at this point except for her children. But so as long as they're safe, she'd be like, fine, I'm taking y'all mm-hmm. down but, and I mean, I'm going she, down. Can she even keep them safe, though? Because, I mean, that's the thing. They've killed Send her brother, somewhere else. <laughs> her husband. I mean, everything yeah. else. Like, what else can she but do? I, I mean, I think there's a, a, for us or for me, I, I think there's a rage that kicks in where, yes. you know, she's never been able to protect anybody. Maybe she can't protect her children, but maybe at this point she's just so mad at all of them that she just can't oh, yeah. hold it back anymore. Well, so. I think she said it perfectly where she was like, I've done everything right. Like, mm-hmm. what else can I do? Yes. Like, there mm-hmm. is nothing else mm. left that is absolutely yeah because she's like i tried the right path and nope did see where yeah, that got yeah, me yeah. Which, that's a good point uh also rewinding a hair back to uh having lena on screen mila j in the chat points out i uh, love lena it's good to see darker skin characters in these types of shows that are period pieces because yeah they're just not as represented that um was that ever a thought ahead of time in terms of diversifying the cast or finding the right actors or the well, historical accuracy? It's interesting. I've always had a bit of a set to with the television industry back in the UK about this, which mm. is in the best Henry V I've ever seen on stage was played by a wonderful actor called Adrian Lester, who is soon to be seen in Star show The Rook. Coming soon <laughs> on Star. Oh, I just, I just um, saw the preview of that. It looks really good. It, is, it looks very cool. Adrian, I mean, Henry V was obviously not a person of color. Adrian knocks it out of the park. I would love to see slightly more color blindness in the way we cast sh- uh, TV shows. Yeah. Um, because I really don't think you're going to care. If the acting is good, the character's interesting, you should get lost in it. However, in this particular show, what we had an opportunity to do was actually make it more historically yes. correct. So this mm. isn't diversity casting. This is accurate historical casting. But but also, I think um, I, I sort of got caught fire with it when I was doing The White Princess, and I asked one of our historical advisors what would be the situation for people of colour in this period, because even though I knew the main characters uh, had to be white characters because they're all of the same family, I wanted to try and, you know, show that. Um, yeah. And the historical advisor said, um, yeah, yeah, I know what you're trying to do. You want to just do some diversity um, because it's all a bit PC, you know. But um, it would be, and I quote, a stark anachronism to put people of colour in the show. So I was like, mm, thanks. Google it. <laughs> I mean, literally, a cursory Google search will tell you that that yeah. isn't true. Mm. And I was so... So did you get a new advisor? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't someone formally yeah. on the show, but yeah. Uh, so... We did have some people of colour in The White Princess because I wanted to at least try and show in the crowd scenes, you know, that people of colour existed in yeah. in London. But, of course, when Matthew and I started looking at Catherine's story and the, the possibility of having lead characters and actually for the first time giving those people their place back in history, it, I mean, it was genuinely for us the most exciting thing about the well, show. Well, actually, the chap who plays um, uh, John who was um, uh, uh, came over with Catherine John Blank. entourage. Yes. And he, you'll see him standing in the archery scene when uh, Lena, uh, sorry, when Rosa first went to say to Stafford, I'm pregnant. Oh, mm-hmm. you remember? Remember? And he tells, he tells them where everyone's gone and he gives them information. That character is a real person that you can, that was the first person when we Googled, we found John Blank, who was a herald in the court of Henry VIII. Um, he's in a tapestry. He's in a tapestry. You can see him. You can actually see him. And there are records him. of how much money he was paid by Henry VII and Henry VIII as well. Yay for documents. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Were there any other moments that stood out to you that we haven't gotten to yet? No, I, I, I just, I'm so astonished with what you guys have done. And it just, I really want to go back and watch the other two because this was the first one that I'd heard about. And so um, I've heard that there's the White Princess and the White Queen. Did y'all do both of those? No, I did all of them. Uh, okay. Matthew and I did just the Spanish Princess. Okay. Now, um, quick question on that, which we've had some people mention, like, well, you need to go watch that one, watch that one. <laughs> but if you're just coming onto it now, how relevant is it? Like, would you be, I mean, obviously you'd want to promote things you worked on, but is it one of those, do you feel Spanish Princess should be an entity of itself and then go check out the other ones if you like it kind of an idea or hurry up and go watch them right now? I'm the wrong person to ask. <laughs> I, 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 I think I'm too close to it. I, I hope mm. the Spanish princess works on its own and stands on its own and maybe with just a little bit of recapping of who the people are and then go back and watch the others. But I know people who've watched them in the right order have such a history and mythology they bring with mm. each of the characters. I think it gives them a richer viewing experience. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I watched the, the White Queen as just as a as a punter watching the TV and I, I loved it. And then obviously I watched you making the, yeah. the, the white princess from, from, from nearby and, and I, helped and <laughs> <laughs> helped secretly. But I mean, I think, um, I think it is great to watch it from the start, watch the white queen, watch the white princess, watch the Spanish princess, then watch some more Spanish princess. There we go. Cause there will be more on that. So, um, and when, actually, when will that be? Like mm. since, since you already we'll, have it written, but when yeah, will you start we're filming actually... from September? Oh, okay. okay. Um, and it will be aired sometime in 2020. But okay. Well, well, that's know. not that far away, all things it's considered. Not. Uh, I did realize kind of a couple major characters, we didn't really touch on that much. Catherine and Harry. Mm -hmm. oh, I was like, oh, oh yeah, those them. Two, yeah. Those guys, <laughs> the main people in the episode, in a way, of like who we want to get married. <laughs> But all things considered, it wasn't so much about them this episode. I mean, him going, oh, I declare my love for you. I really love you. But probably sleeping off with his sister. Or the sister, I mean. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. We had that discussion. And then going into it, how much did you both feel he loved her? Because we've talked about that as well. Mm -hmm. And then people in the chat are just like, okay, no, it's just lust. He didn't really love her. Or we said maybe who he is now loves her. But later, it's more of like, the, it's more of the flash mm -hmm. in the pan infatuation. Mm -hmm. right. Well, because he does, like, he, he was loyal to her for a while, right? Mm -hmm. And then she couldn't produce an heir, and then he got really frustrated. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, I, I really love the whole Henry VIII story. So that's what I, I thought he did. Like, he was really, like, a romantic, and he wrote these love mm -hmm. letters. Mm -hmm. But then he got really pissed that he didn't have a male heir. And he was like, okay, I got to find somebody else. Yeah, I mean, I think... I think for us that is true. I think he's a certain kind of guy. He was molly coddled. He was brought up by the women. He wasn't meant to be the king. He was spoiled. So I think even real love from Harry is something a little more narcissistic and you know mm. less humble than it might be from somebody else. You know, um, but I think our view is that he really did love her. And when they were married, he had her emblem of the pomegranate painted all over things. He wrote her love letters. I mean, he was you know, to, to all intents and purposes infatuated with her. Um, I think we both feel that it's a, an interesting story about his character as well, because all anybody knows about Henry VIII is just, you know, divorced, beheaded, died, you know, the whole thing with his wives. But the reality is he was with her for 24 years. He did love her by all the evidence we can find. And actually, it's a really sad story because every time she failed to have a son or their sons died, he became obsessed with the fact that she'd lied to him and obsessed with the fact that actually she must have had sex with his brother. Because God was punishing them. And God them. was punishing mm. them. And so he went crazy with this idea that actually he'd sinned against God. He was going to hell. He'd done a terrible, terrible thing. And if you look at it through that lens, I mean, obviously he's, he did hideous things to his wives, but at the same time you go, okay, there is a slightly different story there that's more interesting and paints him in a slightly more sympathetic light. Well, and if you think about it from a parent's point of view, like you think you're about to have this baby and then you mm -hmm. go through this like post-mortem, I mean, that had to have taken a big toll on him as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it did. It did. And um, I mean, Anne Boleyn was a political move, you know, to put it right with God. Hmm. Um, I, I mean, I think he definitely fancied Anne Boleyn very much and he had fallen out of love in a way with Catherine. But I, I think she was, as Emma says, the true love of his life. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, now, we've been touching upon it already a bit, but we'll do our special segment of keeping it real. <laughs> oh, good, because I have a good question for that. <laughs> so it's been fascinating to talk about the fact of fiction of this show. Uh, go ahead with your question. So my question for this, keeping it real, we know that Prince Harry was not that old. Like, he was 10 when they first met. You show him as a handsome, and he just seems to be getting more handsome. They grow as up the so far since <laughs> I was like, I'm like, okay, I can get on board with this guy. You know, so what was, why did y'all decide to go with a little bit older? Just, so the, just to get the ball rolling? Well, we just thought it might look a little bit like a school production if they we're all kind of like, hello, Catherine, with his big crown on. And, yeah. okay. <laughs> which, which goes to our question of the bowl cut with Arthur. Like, when we first saw that, we were like, we would not want to marry that guy at all. Oh. Was that? Well, that's, a, that's a real Tudor haircut. And also, <laughs> you know, as, as program makers, it is, of course, also coding Arthur as that's the one you don't fancy. Right. You know, and, and that's the one you do. But also, I mean, to, to build on what <laughs> Matthew said, it's, it's a really tricky story to tell because... Um, she arrives, and for us, within two episodes, Arthur is dead, and what we're asking people to look at is the love story between her and Harry. Mm. If we'd had a child, a 10-year-old, playing Harry in episode one, and then what? We recast him to, what, a 14-year-old in episode two, and then by episode three, suddenly, no, here's our, you know, here's Rory. You know, here's our actor. Mm -hmm. The audience would be going, what, sorry, what's happening? And you're not invested in it. And so we had to make a decision. What is the essential story here? And the essential story is between Catherine and Harry. So therefore... We disregarded the age that he was when she arrived so that we can say right from the beginning to the audience, watch this space. Mm. You know, these are the people you're investing in here. I looked like Rory when I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and then also building upon that, when you're making the decisions for this show, how do you approach the fact and fiction and making it as much history and how historically accurate you can? Because, I mean, this is a star show. This is not a history channel show. Mm -hmm. And you get a little more liberty with historical fiction. But what goes into that process for you as showrunners? And this show in particular? Um, we look at the history and we do a lot of research and we read everything. Then we choose what we want to go with. And we make decisions to change things that we think are more interesting if we change them or... or more truthful to an emotional line uh, that we're interested in. I mean, you know, it's not, as you say, it's not a documentary, it's not a history lesson. And if we stuck to the absolute facts, they'd all have rotten teeth and they'd be speaking <laughs> in Middle English and no one would understand what they're saying. I mean, you know, so the idea that there is some kind of historical truth we could put on the screen is a bit of a bogus idea anyway. Mm. We're really aware we're making entertainment. It's a drama. Um, and the most important thing is the 21st century audience are excited by it and compelled by it. But within that, as much history as... Yeah. And if people are excited by what we're doing with the drama of it, then they could maybe watch something on the History Channel yeah. or read a good book about it, a, a factual book about it, and learn the truth. Because we've had some people comment and viewers, and, like, if you were somebody randomly tuning into this show, you might not know history, but, you know, specifics of British royalty and history. Mm. But at the end, it does have the some things have changed. Yeah, yeah. So, how valuable do you think it is to have that knowledge prior or as you said Matthew go the other way maybe you like this and go oh let me go look up the actual things that happened uh, it's, it, yeah I mean I think it's I mean I know this sounds a little bit pompous but Shakespeare <laughs> didn't stick to historical yeah. truth <laughs> <laughs> um, he just told a good story mm. um, and I mean we've got a lot of factual history in our show there is a lot of stuff there that's that really happened um, there's also a lot of stuff in there that we don't we'll never know what really happened right. um, so you know I'd say if you enjoyed the show go go get a good book from the library <laughs> go to the library kids <laughs> Well, and that's what I feel like I do every episode. I'm like, okay, I need to look this up and figure out if yeah. this is true. But I feel like that mm. almost makes it more fun and more relatable. Yeah, I, and in truth, I think it probably is more fun that way around because I think people who know a lot about history are the ones who go, oh, this isn't this isn't the exact thing. <laughs> and they get a bit emotional about it sometimes. But, you know. Well, that's like a book made to a film and they go, wait, that's not what yes, it was. Exactly, it's the exactly. same idea, but no, this is history yeah. to that. And also to make it more digestible for an audience in the course of a television show. And as you said, the aging of like, that wouldn't work on a TV show. So how is the, ad it's like the yeah. adapting has to work for that format. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there anything either of you would like to add on the experience working on this show or uh, any fun things that fans might not know about that you'd want to share? Any really funny things happen on set or? <laughs> I mean, probably the thing I kept pointing out on the live Twitter feed today was how the, the diff people would go out of one courtyard through an archway and into the barracks. If you follow Lena across yeah. the courtyard and into the barracks, those two courtyards were 40 miles apart. 
so <laughs> and so we had to film one. her walking down one one <laughs> tunnel and then we had to go 40 miles and film her coming out of the tunnel oh, and then we superimposed the the castle in the background i love things like that i forget it myself until i see it on tv I know, and i go amazing. oh cool <laughs> uh, and also on in terms of the the set uh, at Production designer Will Hughes Jones designed and built the Westminster sets. You know the big vaulted wow. ceiling corridor. Yeah. He built it all for the Spanish princess. Sorry, for the white princess. Yeah. Then we threw it all away, and then he had to build it all oh, again because yeah. <laughs> we didn't know we were going to do so another now show. Now at least you know there's more episodes. Don't throw oh, anything. No, it's still, <laughs> it's still standing in our way. studio in Bristol. It's still up in the Bothyard <laughs> studio. It's been sitting there for six months because this time we were all just like, nobody touch the set. We oh, might need it again. Wow. Uh, and any other, um, you mentioned a happy accident before. Are there any other happy accidents that have happened over the course that have been interesting in retrospect? Oh. Um... I mean, we were really, it's not exactly an accident, but we were incredibly privileged. We were able to film actually in the Alhambra in Spain. Yeah, And they let gorgeous. almost nobody in there. And it's a bit of a lottery who they let in. Mm. And we had uh, two hours before the crowds came in. So it wasn't, the sun wasn't even properly up. Mm. Um, and Matthew shot a lot of stuff in Spain in the desert. So the interiors of the uh, Alhambra are not the Alhambra. That's we went and shot that in um, the Alcazar Palace in Seville, and I went out with a crew and shot that. But and and, and um, but then just the gardens were the Alhambra. Nice. Yeah. So quickly got in there, got <laughs> out. Gorilla <laughs> filmmaking. TV magic, <laughs> love it. Yes. Uh, one more quick person from the chat, Lena Jin. Awesome series, great casting, chemistry between Catherine and Henry. I'm hooked and can't wait for the next episode. Right. And speaking of that, let's do. We'll have a couple quick predictions, and predictions. you can laugh at our thoughts. <laughs> oh, don't we get to do predictions? <laughs> oh, no. I don't know. Um, so, I. Now I'm happy to know that they get married. So I'm like, well, maybe Oviedo and Lita will have... I think there'll be some more bumps along the way as information gets revealed. Uh, I, just from the trailer alone, slash her course of action, Maggie Pole is like, you know what? Screw all of you. I'm going to like fight back. I am not going to take this sitting down, which I'm really excited to see. I want to see more of these strong women. They're like, nope, not going to let that slide by. Uh, I don't think we'll see Joanna again, but she would have been fun to see again. But maybe. I don't know. I feel like we could possibly see her just because it left with, like, how how is this going to end with Catherine and her dowry? Because, you know, now they have this alliance. So I don't know. Will we see more maybe. of her? I, I do love her. And then my other question I'm trying to think of is, um, what is going on with Mary in Scotland? Did she right, get married? Right, we did get a big pause on that one. Yeah. Did she get married to the old man that she got you know, like who's not that old when we saw who, he was like yeah. older yeah. than her, but he's not like a grandpa old. He had bad PR, didn't he? Yeah, he was, <laughs> I was like, he's gonna be like sixty and she shows up and he's maybe forty. Mm. And I'm like, that's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. Girl, calm down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, so that that's the only other thing I was kinda thinking is like, where is that gonna go? Cool. How, uh, yeah. Right? I'm like, oh, it's just exciting to see. And I, I do like the historical aspect, historical fiction aspect, because then you do keep guessing of, you know, maybe some anchors. Yeah. But the journey makes it more entertaining, because otherwise you're like, well, this is going to happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because this I will tell boring. you, the, the episode that you left us hanging with um, Henry <laughs> announcing his marriage, I was like, oh, my God, this show just took a turn. And I was, like, texting, yes. like, oh, my gosh, did you see that? Because it was so and unexpected. That's he did announce that? Oh. He, he, at one point, he, he wrote to uh, the Pope and and said, actually, let's amend my request for Harry to marry him. It might be me. Oh, oh I, we did not know that. Yeah, we didn't make that up. Wow. <laughs> nice. Well, we that's why up. we have you here. Yeah. They tell us all the juicy exactly. secrets in detail. <laughs> and I wanted to um, say about Meg, oh. what you were just saying. So um, Meg, for, for this series, uh, I think it, we can probably just say she's not, you won't see any more of her in mm. this series. She's huge in the back eight. So the other okay. eight episodes that we're nice. going to be making, we are totally with her story. We're up in Scotland. Ooh. We're Ew. sort of Spanish princess meets Outlander. <laughs> 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 well, on that note, thank you so much for joining us, thank Emma you. Frost yeah. and Matthew Graham. It was so thank good you. to talk about all the details of it. Uh, where can people find you online and any other quick things you need to plug besides the fact that there's eight more episodes, Spanish princess coming up? Um, I'm on, only on Twitter at Emma Frost London. I'm on Twitter at Tremens DR. Don't ask me why. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask. And you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Virginia Reina. And my name's Carrie Lane. You can find me online at Carrie D Lane. That's K A R I D L A N E. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, everybody watching, listening. And we'll see you all next week.
Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.